Old soldiers never die; they just fade away," goes an old barracks ballad. But for 93-year-old George Macdonald, the memories of the Second World War never fade away. In 1941, Macdonald was 19 and was told that he, along with a regiment of 1,975 young soldiers, was going to Hong Kong. Well, you can imagine the excitement. Here we are, a bunch of farm boys. Boys,、uh, young men from little towns, never been in a big city in our lives, know nothing about China. After landing on the island, the young men acquainted themselves with China's ancient culture and modern skyscrapers in the Pearl of the Orient. We met the Hong Kong volunteers, and they were very professional citizens of Hong Kong, and they were going to be. Fighting with us, but nobody really believed the Japanese would be so foolish. On the morning of December 8th local time, McDonald recalled the Japanese struck Hong Kong almost the same time they attacked Pearl Harbor in Hawaii. And now the battle started. A gigantic, <coughs> a gigantic Japanese army of approximately 80,000 men. With a powerful air force and a very strong naval presence, attacked Hong Kong. The Japanese were very well equipped and were experienced troops who had been fighting in China, and so a very difficult battle began. We were outnumbered enormously. In both in manpower and in equipment, we had no air support. On the first day, the Japanese destroyed our naval vessels in the harbor, and destroyed our military airplanes at Kai Tak Airport. After 18 days, they were defeated, suffering heavy casualties of about 500, and the survivors were exhausted. Were forced backwards, but they never surrendered. We never put our hands in the air to the Japanese because the governor、uh, signed an agreement with the Japanese, and we were ordered to lay down our arms. On December 25th, which is known in Hong Kong as Black Christmas, the island was overrun by the Japanese, who began their military dictatorship over the people for the following four years. But when the Canadian soldiers were held as prisoners of war at Shen Shui Po, the Chinese would not give up on them. It's amazing. The Chinese weren't giving up either. Yeah. No, they they resisted in this awful struggle. A year later, the captives were sent to a shipyard as slave laborers in Yokohama, Japan. One in three prisoners died of disease, starvation, and abuse. However, McDonald said the war was over, and he had no hatred towards the Japanese people. Meanwhile, McDonald's ties with China never end. When McDonald became the Deputy Minister of Ontario on charge of trade and technology in 1982, he reached out to China once again. Thanks to his efforts, a technology center was built in Nanjing, China's Jiangsu Province, in 1987, which has been functioning till today. We had a wonderful relationship. So I've been involved with the Chinese people as a soldier and as a diplomat for a long time, for about 80 years. McDonald published four books so far after his retirement from business and government. He hopes to tell his stories to more people.